oh my God, I think I'll be perfect as a life coach. Been in the dark side, hit rock bottom. It doesn't mean to say you forget what's happened in the past, but you've learned to deal with it and you can help other people. And then I'm like, if you, unless you get yourself out of it, no one's going to help you. And I always say to you, if I got through it, you can get through it. Well, I'm in a good place now and I would never, ever let myself get back to that place. So, welcome back, Katie Price, to number two on the podcast. And, of course, we're in real life person because before I had blonde hair I know. and I was living in Bali. I think I had blonde hair then, didn't I? I can't no, even no, remember. No, I was no, doing no, it in my no. kitchen. That's all I it's remember. It's definitely darker now, though. Maybe oh, I you've... know. I, can't, I never decide what I want to be. Dark hair. I had my lips done live on TikTok last night. Bloody hell, TikTok's And your bum done from... as well, didn't you? I had that done four weeks ago. How's I, that? What you know what I'm like? I'm just like manufactured, and I <laughs> that the brain's real and the heart's real. <laughs> and nothing else left. No, well, oh, and the brain, yeah. But the, so much has happened since I saw you. You even your premiere. Yeah, go on. I, let's talk about. Let's talk about that. that uh, the reason I want to talk about that is because all I ever watch is crime, and mm. believe it or not, I interviewed a murderer a month ago. Okay. So a murderer... Yeah, because you got your new podcast since the last time we spoke as well, right? Oh, God, yeah. I started that in June. And then with my sister, it's called The Katie Price Show. Of course. And... Um, Your sister's just... Oh, she's so different <laughs> to me. That's what makes it work. And then we did a tour, not a tour, a night, a theatre tour. They said it's so unknown that you've done... You started your podcast in June and then last month we did our tour sell out night oh it was a podcast tour oh yeah, yeah so now yeah. we're doing that pictures. in may next year we've wow. got all the dates in for that two and a half hours of me talking i'm surprised everyone was still awake and then i sang two songs so i'm nearly there being a pop wow. star too. <laughs> but i loved it and then from your podcast to then your premiere i have to say i know i jump because that's my brain it goes all over the place that's all right. i'm so into true crime documentaries and all of that and then a murderer wrote to me, and because um, I get weird people that not, I'm not saying that, well, it is a bit weird having a murderer write to <laughs> All people write to me, they literally are like, Katie Price, Mikey Mansion, and it gets to me. So I remember okay. opening this letter thinking, oh, this is going to be someone asking for money or, you know, the Bible or whatever they want to say. I get all sorts. And then when I opened this letter, I could hardly read it, but he's called the Cannibal Costa Killer. And I thought, this can't be real. This has got to be a wind-up. Okay. So I Googled him, and he really is. He, so he's in jail now? He's been out four years, right. and he wrote to me. He literally hit his missus, cut her up, and ate her. What's and the thought, Costa, then? Because it was in Costa del Sol. Oh, I thought you meant it cost a coffee. I thought no, fucking half no, the cheek of it. And I thought, oh my God, I'm so interested. And everyone was like, In hey. him or in in just that like in him, so be fascinated what, what what tricks people's brains. And Because um, there are there is some thing how women have a bit of a thing for like, no, I serial got, killers and I haven't murders. got a thing, but I'm I'm interested in the human brain, what makes people tick their triggers, this, that, and obviously because I've had therapy and PTSD, they're triggers that mm. trigger you off. And um, so I called Channel 4, because literally I do stuff with them anyway. I said, oh, my God, this murder is written to me. I promise you he's a real murder. Google him, Google him. And everyone's like, Kate, aren't you worried that a murderer's like taking an interest? He hasn't taken an interest like that, but he wanted to tell his story through me because he has seen that I've been in the Priory, suffered PTSD, mental health. He thought I might understand and I'd be the person, not that I'd understand that he's killed someone, but understand the reason why he's got there. So then I started interviewing. Now, I know this is about you and me, but I'm just telling you about Go this. Go for it. And he was abused as a kid, and he's been brought up in that kind of world, criminal world. He robbed banks and things like this, nick cars. He got with the wrong crowd, and that's all he knew when he was younger. And then he basically got arrested for the robbery. But when he was in hospital, because they broke his wrist, so he escaped in hospital and then got in a lorry to France and then he got into Spain. And he was at a cafe. I'm cutting the story short. And then basically he, there was a couple next to him. One of them knew his cousin or something like that, but there was a lady there. Anyway, the next day he was walking along the promenade, saw the lady, had lunch, and they started seeing each other. Then he had moved in with her. After four days, he said she wasn't very good at drinking. And he was telling the story how he'd been abused and all of that and something could come up, but she sort of took the piss out of it. 
and it triggered in his brain. And she was having her house done up and there was a bag of tools next to her. And he said that he got a hammer and literally whacked her around the head. And she was dead. So then I was asking him questions like, well, what went through your head when you did it? What was your, what made you have that rage? He was coming off heroin, drugs and that. And then he said he went on the beach and he had all these things talking to him, voices talking to him. So I was like, so you're on the beach and only you've just killed your message. She's on the floor. What What's going through your mind? What, what do you want to do next? But he said he went back next, put a bag on her head. And I went, why did you put a bag on her head? What made you think, you know, when she's lying there? You know, you'll have to see it. And he said, because it was bleeding. And I said, but apparently you chopped her up. What did you do? put her in the bath? But he dragged her to the shower. But I was more fascinated in, all right, you've killed her, but what made you think, well, I've got to cut her up, put her in a suitcase? And I was mm. asking him about the blood. You know, it was really interesting, but it had come from triggers from when he was younger. But I said, you know, you've done your time. So what happened? Then he, after a week, he then admitted killing her. And I said, did you actually eat her and all of that? He said, well, I made it up. There's people say that he has killed other women, so I asked, have you killed other people? He said no. Is this all on letters, by the way? Or is it? No, I interviewed oh, him you in interviewed person him. Right. on okay. Little Hampton Beach, funny enough, down the road from where my mum lives. I had right. the kids in the car, I had the crew there, and I was saying to him, oh, my God, look, this is a murderer, look. He just looked like, this is thing, you never know who's a murderer, well, ever know anything. Did you, did you know there was two convicted murderers that were at that premiere? Was there? Yeah. Oh, my God, I would love to have spoke to them. <laughs> so you have I, got a thing for murderers, haven't you? No, do you know what it is? It's the brain that triggers mm. it off. And then when I watched yours, I turned up, I went, it's, they interviewed me before, and they went, it's about a psychopath. I went, oh, what, is the psychopath going to be on stage? And they went, it's Lewis. And then, do you know when we done a picture, I went, who's this psychopath? And you went, it's you. I went, what, you? <laughs> so then when I watched your, your documentary, it's so interesting. Like a lot of people say... Um, how can Lewis be how he is now? But I believe people can change. Whether they think you're still a psychopath or not, it, who, who cares? You've come through it. Mm. And it's so fascinating watching them videos, knowing that you were suffering and that was obviously your way of dealing with things and how you've come out of that. And I know there's the lady, and I can't think of her name, who's like, oh, it's a cult, it's a cult. Yeah, yeah. Who cares if it's a cult? If you're yeah, helping yeah. people, who cares? And as I was watching it, I entered, I identified with so many things, the self-medicating with the drugs, because I've been there, you self-medicate, you don't know what you're doing to yourself. You, you just want help, but you don't know what to do, so you go on a self-destruct. I've done exactly mm. the same thing. Until no, you haven't, have you? <laughs> oh, haven't I? <laughs> but until you're in that situation, no one will ever understand it. So it is good to talk about mm. it. And then just watching your journey, I think it's fascinating. You've done so well with it. It doesn't mean to say you forget what's happened in the past, but you've learnt to deal with it and you can help other people. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I think I'll be perfect as a life coach. Well, there we go, the big but reveal. But it is so, and I think most Because you've always said me after, like, all right, Lewis, I've I watched did. your documentary, I want to be a life coach. But I do, I tell you why, because, you know, you still learn as you go on. And I really have been there, been in the dark side, hit rock bottom. And you, if you, unless you get yourself out of it, no one's going to help you. And it is by talking, hearing other people's story. Like when I was in the Priory, you know, I've done the same as you. Sit in the room, hear other people's stories, and then you think, do you know what, I'm not alone. People do. People, who, they could be businessmen or they could just be people who have had bad marriages, but bad abused or anything can be a trigger. And I always say to her, if I've got through it, you can get through it. Mm. And it's like, and now it's it's your living and, yeah, but you have to have hard work. People, you can't just change. You, it is hard work. You do have to go through the process of things. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I've done to where I'm in a good place now and I would never, ever let myself get back to that place. And I hope I've learned the tools through therapy and talking that I won't let that happen because now I'd recognise, I would know if there's a trigger or someone taps me on the shoulder. Mm. You you know, because you learn, I think you learn, uh, like I say, the, the triggers. And I've, I've got rid of so many people around me through the years who I know are triggers or who are reminders. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you have to sort of recondition your brain. 
If you you understand, surely I understand you understand. What you mean, but I was just but thinking, mate, that's funny because usually when you get triggered, you want to kind of work out why you're getting triggered and then kind of re- remove it or I've reverse done. it yeah. rather than. But you, but have but to you talk some people you do it. have to get them out of your life, I guess, as well if they are. But completely... you do have to talk about it to get through it, and it's not an easy journey. But it is fascinating. I look back at the times so where I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even want to pick up my phone. I will just be mm. in bed. Like, no, I can't be asked. And communication is key to everything. If you don't communicate and you go in a hole, no one else is going to help you. And then you'll have everyone else, what's the matter with you? Why are you acting like this? And like, I saw that through your programme because everyone was like, what is going on? He's a good boy. There's this something. He's a nice person, but he's got this, that. And it's like, it was the same like me. I wasn't as crazy as you, in a different way crazy. (laughs) But you can do it. And the life coach thing, I don't care if people think it's a cult. It's like that lady, a cult, but successful and help other people. So what is wrong with that? I think, yeah, because we we talk about... i talk now. Yeah, we talk about (laughs) the documentary. We talk about building a culture. You know, it's a a type of people uh, that all want a certain thing out of life. Yeah. And... Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the exact definition of a cult. I think you've, it's got religious elements to it, isn't it? Well, when um, I think of a cult, I think of like um, Bronson and all these American people who were doing weird things. This isn't, this is talking. Oh, Manson, how, you mean? Yeah, Manson. That's yeah, right. Oh, Charles the one Bronson, Charles like Manson. No, he been... don't like me, Charles Bronson. He's no? done pictures of me in jail and it's all been out. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, but that's, yeah. <laughs> See, there's an involvement. <laughs> but what, what you've done... And what I've been through, they're quite similar things. When he gets out of jail, you could do like a mis- mix, uh, what's it, Misfits boxing fight with him, Bronson. You're saying that. Even Misfits have been in contact. They yeah. want me to do that. Yeah. And I'm like, what, do you it? want a 45 year old woman who's had five kids in a, in like, in a ring with um, 20 year olds? I said, do you know what? If I put my mindset to it, I could do anything. Never Why underestimate not? the pricey. You get to the point now where you just got. You need that next thing, haven't you? You've done so much in your career. It's like, well, well boxing bored. is next. <laughs> yeah, I would do it, but it would have to be the right price for the pricey, obviously, <laughs> yeah. because if I did it, I would tra- I'd have to train so hard, and mm. I would, because I wouldn't want to go in there and look like an idiot and people. I'd put on a show, obviously, because I love to do that. I'm an entertainer. But I'd have to work hard, because there's no way I'd go in there for people to say, oh, this is pathetic. I want them to be like... Bloody hell, she can do it. So we've got two revelations from this podcast already. You're going to be a life coach and you're going to be a boxer. They have asked me and I said if <laughs> I did... The boxing life coach. But I haven't said no. I said I actually will do it, but it would have to be towards the end of the year because I've got TV commitments. We don't need face all bashed up there, really. I don't mind. I can get it redone. <laughs> <laughs> Just go in for another update. But that's right, the doc. thing with me. What is it? I'm like... Like, people would say, Kate, because I'm celebrating 30 years in the industry next year, and that makes me feel so old, wow. but it's actually a fact. That's but I'm still hungry for yeah. everything. Like, a lot of people, if they've been in it that long, they don't want to do it, they're not mm, hungry. Sick of it. And I treat every job I do with the same excitement, the same drive, because I think if you're cocky and think, oh, it will work, like I'm doing a book again next year, um... I think if you go with the attitude, oh, it will sell because people don't like, you, you can't do that. You have to put in effort, 100% effort. Otherwise, I feel a failure to mm. myself. And I do that with everything I do. Because well, otherwise, it it's only me that turns up. If I don't turn up, who's going to take my place? There isn't. So mm. I still have that drive. There's so much I want to do. And you're still keeping on top of the latest trends. I mean, I'm not even on TikTok and you've got 1.5 million followers on yeah, there. Yeah, but you that's teach not a lot me. to some people. But what uh. I've learned about it is I didn't know that the TikTok, the actual TikTok people, have been watching me for months mm. and watching, is it called aneurysms or what do they call it? Aneurysms? Algorithms. Algorithms, that's why I say things wrong. They were watching that. So you might not have had as many, like, millions and millions of followers, but the engagement, the engagement yeah. is, like, 95% every time. Then they got in touch and said, Kate, we want to sign you up. We have to sign you up because you do so well on it. And I'm like, do I? They said, yeah, you're just so authentic. Mm. I think when I'm on it, I just talk, just answer anything. Put some people in their places when they get a bit cocky because, you know, they're behind a screen and think they have the right. So you call out your haters, do you? Of course I do. And then everyone God, you must be there all day. On. They no do. No offence, but, but that, that, that must be a big job to be, keep on top of them. I'm so like... In tune with it and like... Which ones are the ones where you go, right? Oh, it's the usual. They're like, oh, she's so plastic. And I'm like, yeah, I'm so plastic. I've been built around the world. Like, yeah. or some people get confused. Is that Kate? Is that Jordan? Because mm. people, for the people these days 
forget I've had like 20 odd years being Jordan mm. and being Jordan I've done so much and achieved so much whereas nowadays the new people on social media they don't really know about the past they just know about now and then my kids now, and yeah. things but TikTok it was Instagram I've still got my Facebook followers I think I've got more followers on that but I use all my platforms for everything and I think that's where it works and then I do the OnlyFans because I have the Jordan people who love the Jordan so I, I love doing so, my but photos. But last time, shows. you're like a only found a millionaire, aren't you? Yeah, but you know what it is? We all love money, but to me, it's about achieving my goals. Mm. You can't take money with you. Let's put You can't take it with Yeah, we all love money. Of course we do. But to me, it's achieving that goal. I think because so many times in my career, everyone's like, you won't be able to do that. Nah, you can't do that. You can't. It, that's what drives me. It's a... Uh, you won't achieve this. You mm. won't do it. And I'm like, really? Watch me. I love hearing that. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. And it gives me that little drive. Well, I'm going to tell you. I bloody will. I'm going to say you're not going to be a life coach but then. You Just know so you I do will it. be. <laughs> so let's talk about that then. So yeah, if, if you were it. to like niche so down. How does into... it work? Anyone listening okay. who would want to join you. Oh, this is a good opportunity. Thanks for leading this up for me to plug. Well, no, because you have to, because there'd be people out there who've been through stuff and think, Oh my God, I, I could so help people, mm. but where do you go? Yeah. Because do you go through a course to become a psychologist, therapist? Do you go through courses or can we do that through you? This is the question because I know, even though my busy, my work's busy, yeah. I know I'd put time for it. You can make time for anything if you want to. I don't believe you don't have time. You can. Anyone can make time for anything. So of course. over to very you, simple. Lewis. <laughs> it's very simple. With us at the Coaching Masters, we offer everything you need to not only become a coach, but also start the online business side of things. For someone like yourself, you wouldn't yeah. need to worry about it. You've got tons of followers, but other people that are starting from scratch, so they need to know how to build a brand, You know how to start creating content, how to do sales calls and sell their coaching back. But this thing, when like they that. start from scratch, yeah. are the people who start from scratch, will they be people who have had any history with it themselves or could it be someone who's not experienced anything who can do it? It's a mixture. I would say most people that go through some sort of traumatic event or yeah. difficult time in their life are more compelled to want to share it because they're like, oh, that was such a dark mm. place that I now want to be the person that can help other people through it. So you do yeah. get a lot of that. But some people are just really passionate about helping people and haven't been through any shit. Yeah. Uh, but the good thing about coaching is People get it confused. Mentoring is when you give advice and tell people what to do. Coaching is actually using all these tools and techniques and models and frameworks. Yeah. And you could actually have no experience whatsoever and just sit down there and go through these models and ask these questions and people would still have those breakthrough moments. Yeah. So you can have, you know, your you know, your old guy that's never, you know, stepped a foot out of his door his whole life and be an amazing coach. Right. But then you can also get these young kids, people would probably think. Yeah. Um, that could also learn some amazing tools and techniques and help people. Yeah. And then you get everyone in between. Um, but, yeah, there's there's also the older academics. So you, I guess what I'm saying is age and experience. What it, category it, would you put me in? So say I've come to you and I'm inspired to do it and yeah. watched watched your documentary, which is out on Netflix, everyone. Yes, thank that you. That is an achievement. Yes. You've got to be proud of that, though. Of course, of course. The no, Psychopath Life Coach. Check it out, guys. We're but currently even that trending title, as well. Even yeah. the title, because I, when I go on Netflix or anything like I always look for the true crime documentaries. So that would come up anyway if I'd mm. saw that. And if I hadn't known you, I would have watched it. Oh, that's good. So, oh, my God, people, if you and haven't did, watched it, And what did you think? To, go on. I just think it's so, I think, because you've got real footage, I think always real footage is makes it more interesting. And when you've got, like, people from school, your therapist talking... And I think that's what makes it really authentic. Mm. You've got footage, and some people like some people say, "Oh my God, when you look at this footage of Lewis when he was younger, mm. it doesn't. You wouldn't think it's the same person." Same me, yeah. But then you're young then, when you're older now. So of course you've gone through the change. But I think it's good to show your diabolical behaviour, what it was, because it was, but you couldn't help it at Katie the time. Katie Bryce calling my behaviour diabolical. No, that's when you know it's bad. but it's for me, you know you're crying out for help, but it is. Course, but it, that's it what no, makes it so compelling and so good to watch that you've turned it around and people would never have thought that you've done that. So in a mm. way, it's like flicking on the bird. Up yours, I did it. Mm. You all put me down. No one encouraged me. I was suffering this, that, and I made it. And now look at me. That is the biggest... Dish. What do they say? Success is best served cold. What's yeah, that yeah, word? Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I that's mean? It, that's I go, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you've done it. 
Thank you. So it don't matter what anyone says, you've done it. So if anyone's watching, hasn't watched The Psychopath Life Coach on Netflix, get to that right now. It's currently trending and in, in the uh, everyone's watching section. Can't you do it like, well, like do your tour? Like in different countries, why? Who knows? Maybe. So, do, how would that work for you then? Because if you've done that, surely, like, could you do? Do you don't you do this in other countries and stuff, or what? start in other You're, talks and things? Yeah, yeah, I've done a few talks, but mainly what we do is online. So, to you go back to your question, that, yeah. in terms of getting started as a coach, you got to you got to know two things: one, how to coach people, and oh yeah, so actually you had a couple of questions. What type <laughs> of what type of area would I put you in? <laughs> Well, you're I, a I mixture of a, I've got, like, a my coach brain. and a mentor. Yeah, so, so what would you say is right for me? So I've come to you now. Yeah, yeah. Right. I want to help people, Lewis. What do you recommend? What category would I be in? What do I need to do? Because you know and everyone knows I've been through this shit. Yeah, yeah. And um, I want to help. Well, it would have to be you deciding because you've got to be very comfortable with the type of person that you help and what you're helping them with because there's two main core components there. It's a specific audience that you can resonate and connect with. And you'll probably know who they are anyway. You're typical fans, right? You want to snap into that kind of market. Yeah, I get would... asked questions. So it, it, but this is the thing. It can either be, especially doing my podcast, you get um, readers' questions, life advice, yeah. I get. And it could, it is literally a mixture. It's either about... Then with someone they're caring for with disabilities, how to cope right, with that. Yeah. Or it could be breakups or marriages mm. or it's people suffering PTSD uh, and then there's depression. Literally is such a spectrum of things I'll get asked. Well, things like that you can wrap up in like a title of something like transformation coach because you're transforming all those areas, you know. Yeah. If you've got lots of different people that want lots of things, you can kind of put some umbrella onto it. Yeah. And the good news is you've already got all this life experience, so that gives you like a, yeah. a lot of the pieces of the puzzle. And then that's yeah. when the actual coaching tools come in because that's how you can actually learn to break things down. Because someone might come to you and they might say, I'm scared of leaving my partner. And there's only so much you can do by saying, just fu <laughs> just fucking leave. You know, that's not always going to work, is it? Don't because that, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can't, there's no point in saying just fucking leave because the fear's still there. So a coach is someone that can actually understand how to break down fear, you know, how, yeah. how to build confidence or how to break down a limit in belief and to do all the, the crazy yeah. things that are actually going to help those conversations actually land better because there's only so much you can, oh, she's getting them out. Big I'm not, reveal. And I, I've got nipple covers on. I'm not doing an Amanda Holden because <laughs> so, I don't like that look. So uh, t <laughs> is, this, is this a recent enhancement? I'm sure it always is with you. Do you know, I want to go bigger as well. And then everyone's like, Kate, no more. The thing is, how I don't many have you had again? I don't know. Even Google. I Google it and I'm like, I definitely haven't had how many what Google said. Are you addicted to boob jobs? Oh, my bum. My, my bum. My, my mum <laughs> says, you've got body dysmorphia. Whenever that you're going through something, you always have surgery. I don't have surgery. I'm never going to look younger. I act a lot younger than my age. And even my kids, they're like, Oh, my God, Mum. Like I said to Princess, I want to go and watch Neo in concert. Why don't you come with me? She went, yeah, but then I was supposed to go with my friends. I went, why don't we all go? She went, Mum, I'm not going to take you with my friends. I went, why? Your friends love me. And she said, well, it's like I wouldn't go with their friends, Mum. And I'm like, am I like their mum? She went, no, you're definitely not. I said, what's the problem <laughs> then? And she says, I've just done masterclasses with Princess where we do these makeup things. She's like, Mum, don't embarrass me. Don't do this. Don't do that. She goes, I never know what's going to come out your mouth. <laughs> but they wouldn't change me. They're like, Mum, you're just, you're not like a normal mum. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's that good. Makes, that makes bad. sense, yeah. But well, I, I must say, good. looking at other mums when I go to the school, and I don't care saying it, and I don't care if they listen, I'm probably a lot older than some of the mums at the school. And then I think, Bloody, I do look younger than them. That's not surgery. I just think it's just the way I am. Mm. I'm definitely not a typical 45-year-old woman. And what's that category? I use the word molly. I don't know if that's a Brighton word. Just sometimes how they dress or don't take care. I'm not high maintenance. I've just always had my hair, nails, eyelashes and eyebrows done and a sunbed. That's Boobs not really and bum and lips and... And la, 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 la. Yeah, but sometimes <laughs> I can get that free for an Instagram post, but that also doesn't You must benefit. get them always free. Yeah, do you know what, though? I even get that for free. Well, not that no, I've had no, many, the, but... No, no, actually, the last beard I paid for... You know, it's last have, you had, have you had a beard transplant? Yeah, I didn't time. know that was a thing. Yeah, they took... took a, have you? They went to Turkey, took it out of the back, put it in the front. Did you do Will it for free for an Instagram post? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Even I get it. So you definitely did. Do. You do your teeth free as well for an Instagram. No, post. I had mine. I had about 
2,000 followers when I got these done. These are old. But. Oh, really? So mine were free as well. I think if I got some now, they might be. So you must oh, get won't. all sorts of... I mean, they must yeah, be dying take, to do your boobs. Yeah, but your I boobs. don't take advantage. This is the thing. I actually paid for my boobs. They were 15 grand. But... Um, when was that then? So this is a recent... These are new model. Was that this year or last year? <laughs> do you go for an annual upgrade? I get bored. You like I need a different shape, different nipple kind of. Well, how does oh, the it... nipples are? They are like teenager ones. I know. I don't mean it like I look like. Te- no, you, what I mean they're they're small because everyone knows when you have kids, your right. areolas look like brown. Right. Dark, so you've been able fragile. to get rid of yeah, that. Yeah, mine look fresh, but I don't get them out on OnlyFans. I do OnlyFans because I've done that for years, and I miss doing it. I'm I'm good in front. I don't care what anyone says. I am arrogant with this comment. I might be older and there might be young talent, but I will wipe the shit with them in front of a camera. <laughs> Behind the camera loves me and I love the camera. End of. Mm-hmm. That is my statement. I love doing them photo shoots because that's all I know. Loaded Magazine, FHM, GQ, all, right, all of them. All right, come on then. Get them out. Never. <laughs> <laughs> you have to join OnlyFans. I don't so even you're get getting them out them, on that. So you're getting them all perfect and you've got these but teenage nipples. I don't even nipples. go out and never show them. Well, that's what I was going to say. No, you you, you don't get them out on OnlyFans. So just you, you look in the mirror well, and you I'm want, in you want underwear, teenage nipples. I'm swimwear on OnlyFans because um, I do documentaries to the BBC and Channel 4 and I had to ask them if they mind if I do OnlyFans because, you know, they're like mainstream TVs mm-hmm. and I do serious documentaries and that with them. And they're fine because they're like, Kate, we can just Google you and see it. Yeah. And I'm like, out of respect for my family and my kids, I've never, apart from American Playboy, it's the only time I got my um, thing out, but not opened leg, it was shut. I bet you a lot of people right now are Googling <laughs> Playboy. What, what year is that? Oh, I, I don't 19, even fucking know. Nine? Oh, I don't know. But then... <laughs> I love doing OnlyFans and no one can take that away from me. That's my my thing I love doing, photo shoots. Other than that, I do like the, doing the TV documentaries, but there's no magazines anymore. This is what I mean. Everything's online and I won't show it on Instagram because I get paid to do it. I've always yeah, got was... paid for it. It's really weird how my brain is. Yeah, if I'm on holiday, if I don't set up bikini shots... I won't have another pap taking a picture. So if I'm on the beach, I don't go on the beach flaunt it in a pin. I'm actually really shy. It's, mm. I don't understand my own brain because people think, oh, I bet when you're like on a beach, you walk flaunt it. Are you joking? No, I don't. I'll cover up in a caftan, mm. wait till I sit on the towel, make sure no one's looking. Or even if I go to the beach, I'll have a towel around me till I get to the beach. Then get it. It's really weird because people think, oh, I bet you flaunt it. I never get them out. Just cover up. Well, you've got to be ready for it, haven't you, to make it look Well, no, best. I just think because I've done it for a living, I just mm. don't need to go out there and flaunt Do it. it. Yeah. I don't, well, for who have I got to prove? But then I like to look in the mirror and know I look fit. Mm. And it does and what's look it like with fit. the, the fame? <laughs> And what's it like with it? Yeah. I mean, you've done a lot of work on yourself. The tattoos are this newest thing. Vaping and tattoos is my new thing. Vaping, I've never smoked in my life. My mum's had her lung transplant. She had it in November, and luckily she's. She's getting through it. She had one lung. That wasn't nice. So I can also help people deal with close people dying, what it's like when you know they're terminal. I've oh, been careful there. That. There's a little bit of regulation on that, that. that area. Do, like, is there? Yeah, yeah. Is there? Well, there's certain things that do fall into sort of mental health kind of... But that's the thing. Well, I would say I'm good at the mental health. Maybe you need to be trained for that. I yeah. don't know. But just how we coped as a family to help other people anyway so I've got vaping because everyone else is doing it around me and I love the smell and the taste but I've got to stop because it's not good for you and the tattoos my mum's like now what are you doing to yourself what is it with the tattoos you better not be having more I said yeah I am mum I want my legs done I want the portraits of the kids yeah you look disgusting (laughs) and I said mum everyone my age or when I end up in a nursing home, we'll all look the same. We'll have perfect tits, tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it's it is. It's a wrinkled up old face. It is, but I love it. <laughs> I hate the pain, but I love it. Thailand, I've got uh, most of mine done. I love it. Well, I most of mine were done in Bali, wouldn't they? Well, you got a lot of catching up to do with a full body suit. Have like you, me. What have you? Have you got all your legs done? Full body suit. Have From you? Literally neck right to the f- You're feet. joking. So yeah. why have you done your tattoos then? For what reason? Isn't it Couple weird? I just like well, it though. One. Uh, I'm an ad- addict, so I just get obsessed. Do you think that's why I do it? It's like probably. It's like because I'm a Gemini and I'm quite not that even if it's a dark, the dark sun. I got an addictive personality. Mm. I really do. Um, so do I? <laughs> yeah. So now I've started. I just yeah. That's what can't I was like. Stop. Because you think, well, I got a little gap there. I want to yeah, fill that, that up. Yeah, that's exactly me. And then, and then me. before you yeah. know it, yeah, I yeah, already yeah. know I want the wings on my back. I already know that. I just got to find the time to do it. 
because it hurts. Yeah. Um, the numbing surgery. Cream. Yeah, the numbing cream. Yeah, that does make a massive. If they could put me to sleep to do it, I'd, I'd have it all. I'm sure you can get that. I don't know. On, on the side. Yeah, yeah, it's, probably, it's not going to be a legitimate <laughs> thing. But. I know in America when I used to get my teeth done, they come with a briefcase at the dentist and just knock you out. Well, actually, I sent that with my, even with the beard transplant. They gave me something. And it, Did I, they? I, thought I went into a fucking kettle. Yeah, because like, the first geez. time I went to Turkey and had my teeth done, um, yeah, they used to knock me out. And I think because I love the anesthetic. See what mm, I mean? Yeah, I do. I love well. that thing. I try and fight just it. Just because you, and then you wake up and you're somewhere But else. I make them do it slow. <laughs> Like, because I've went, I've been going to this called the B Clinic where I get all my boobs and whatever I've had done, mainly in Brussels, and and I pay for it obviously. Just check the time. Just and yeah. they know I know Kate. I hate needles. I hate them. I'm petrified, but I love being put to sleep. I make them do it so slow, and I'm like slower because <laughs> I like to feel it. And then I try and fight. I love it. Be careful, you might have like Michael Jackson or something. No, I won't do it? that. Something no, like no. that. No, that, don't they say heroin's like like that feeling? I would never, yeah. never, I would never, 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 never go there. I know I did the coke, that was it, self medicate, and I admit it, and I've spoke about it. I'm not ashamed of it. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, even then, that gets you in a bad, bad place because you take it to block things out, mm. and then you chase, chase that high, and it doesn't happen. And before you know it, you're sitting there like. Rigor mortis, yeah. as I say. Oh, I hated that. Then the birds Rigor come out. Rigor mortis, and it awful in the daylight, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, it's awful. It, it is an awful situation. And now I just, yeah, even when you look at people, you're like, oh, you know that feeling, but you know it's not just one. That's the trouble. It wouldn't be just one. No, no. It's another, 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 What another. do you think of the line that I did in my documentary? The, that, I, do you know, I looked at it and I thought, fuck me, how was you... How are you not dead? If you was doing it, was you doing it like that all yeah, the time? Yeah. How was you not dead? Uh, that's why there's a documentary about it, I think. I don't I know. I can't believe it. And heart attack. Mm. Like. Four days in a row I'd, get, I'd go. I remember at my worst it was like, yeah, two, three days. And then you're like, what the hell? It's awful. My eyes used to start like flashing because it just wasn't working yeah. anymore. Yeah, isn't it awful <laughs> how you don't have a heart attack? And then you can make yourself panic and think. But with me, when I got the ADHD, I remember... I knew I had it, but I don't care. It is me. My mum was like, you have to be tested. And I'm like, but why, mum, for you or for me? Because they couldn't understand why I react the ways I do about things. Mm. Um, anyway, so I went to Harley Street. Am I talking too much or did you need no, to? No, go for it, go for it. Sorry. So I went with my dad and um, you fill it, they had to fill out forms of me as a kid. I had to fill out forms and all of this. But one of the interesting questions he asked, he said, have you done coke? I said, well, yeah, like I self-medicated on when I had a breakdown, whatever. Whatever the reason, I did it. And he said, what are you like when you're on it? I said, completely quiet, don't talk, don't want to move. And I sit like, like that. And mm. then I just don't want to speak to anyone. You get sketchy. He said that's a massive sign of ADHD. She does the opposite. Or oh, just really shit coke. Could really, have been, could Look have been at one you, of the two. Expert. Could have been one of the two. <laughs> Sometimes they cut it with speed and it puts you on edge yeah, a little horrible. bit. Horrible. Yeah. And he said people like people normally take it to make them louder because you're chatty at first, but then you end up taking too much and then you're like that. So you need to mix it with the alcohol, coca heffaline. So I don't, I don't do the alcohol when I'm on it. Ah, uh, see, so it creates yeah. a different drug. Like co co alcohol oh, really? and cocaine, it creates coca heffaline. It's a different reaction. It's so not yeah. good because it's yeah, you're like so a I'd mixture start of the two. Yeah, so I having a drink, but then feels good. But... I used to do it without not drinking because I was just self medicating. I don't mm. know if that was worse. It's, it's either way, it's disgusting. You wake up disgusting. You're like, I'm never doing it again. But until you pull yourself out of it. But I've never been in the priory for addiction for coke or alcohol. I don't really drink much. What was you in there for again? Um, severe PTSD. Right. Tra traumatic rehabilitation. I so you mentioned for. these and you mentioned the ADHD as well. So let's just be interesting yeah, go to for talk it. about. Question me about it. Yeah. So what's what are those labels? Do you still identify with? Because obviously, with my documentary, the psychopath life coach is obviously the, actually, it's very actually first of all, good question go for you. Do After I think watching, you're a psychopath? Yeah, do you? Do you know what? Labels, right? The reason I am quite like with labels, it comes back to Harvey. Because Harvey has got SOD, it's called deceptive optic dysplasia. Then he's got ADHD. Then he's got deficit opposite efficiency. What was it? He's got loads. And then he's got tick disorder, Prada Willies. He's got um, obsessive. What's the other one? Oh, he's just literally got, got a lot of labels. Lists, labels. 
Some people have labels, they don't want to take medication, they believe in home, like all this natural stuff, but Harvey is on medication for him and it does help. He's got all these labels, but does it change him as a person to me? No. Would I ever change him? No. If I knew, this is the only thing, the hardcore thing I'd, I've ever said, because I didn't know anything about it, if I knew he was blind when I was pregnant, would I have aborted him? Probably. But I did try and abort him anyway three times because I was young, wasn't with the dad, and I couldn't do it. And I thought, you know what, Kate, you're old enough to keep him. If I knew now, if I have a baby, there's something wrong with it, I would never have bought it. I'd, I'd keep it, without a doubt. I mm. would keep it. It's until, you, um, until you're in a situation, you see other families with kids, with this, that, kids in wheelchair, all different things. Until you've lived and breathed it, your attitude would change. Now I've lived and breathed different things, it wouldn't bother me. Because it was the unknown at the time, it, you do think the worst, the worst, the worst... So when Harvey was born and I knew after six weeks he was blind, I didn't know about all the other stuff with him. Now it's his behaviour, the Prada Willies. That means he he doesn't know when he's um, full up. It, defect, it affects his behaviour and his ears are more sensitive because of his eyes. I mean, his challenging behaviour, I call it complex needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got these labels. Does it define him as a person? No, I love him and that's the way he is. He's funny, he's got banter. Comes to me... I've got these labels. Does it make a difference? I'm still that person. I've got through it and I talk about it. Same with you. People call you a psychopath, are you? You're the, you're the same person. You just know how to deal with things different. Does that make sense, mm -hmm. how I'm saying it? So you're basically saying Do it doesn't matter. Do you disagree or not with what I'm saying, like with you? Of course. People might say, oh, he's like this, he's nuts, he's that. But you are still the same person, mm. but you just have learned how to deal and use tools or whatever is what I would say. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, and choice as well. And it's probably quite cool. You're you're not the same as everyone else and life would be boring if you was. So you like the fact I'm a little psycho? It's intriguing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I got. I was in the... Um... Do you reckon people want to push your buttons still? Do you ever get people who try and push your buttons to see if you'll like it? No, because uh, they, they're, they're probably scared they no, might get killed. <laughs> what button do you want to press? To know. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, that, this is the thing with me. It's like, it, every, all of it fascinates me with people, like brains, how they work, what they do. I think that's the same with murderers, what triggers people. But you know what? A lot of things, I don't think you're born a killer. I don't think you're born anything. I don't think you're born anything. I think it starts, they say from childhood, you could disagree or not, but only because I learned in therapy, everything starts from childhood. It doesn't matter how young you are, kids are sponges. And you might not think they listen to things or take things in, but I believe you do. Of course, yeah. I actually believe you do. And I think a lot of things stem as childhood. One thing could happen in someone's life and affect them for the rest of their life. Um, and I saw that in the therapy, because sometimes I would sit there and think, you're you're in therapy for that. Have a have a day in the life of me and what <laughs> I've been through and see if you cope with that. But you can't compare it to people because people deal with things differently. Mm. Like <laughs> the things that when I did SAS, um, I didn't train for it really properly. That's probably why I put my hand up and I had my boobs done. But they did say mentally I was one of the most strongest people they've ever had from what traumas I've been through. But the worrying thing that like therapists has always said is how matter of fact I'm, how I talk to it, just like, oh yeah, it's if I'm going shopping, oh yeah, I've had kidnap threats, yeah. Mm. I was held at gunpoint, raped in front of my kids in South Africa. But the way I say it is so like, matter of fact, they mm. say sometimes that isn't normal because people can't Maybe you're cope a bit with psycho. It. I don't think I'm normal. <laughs> I'm definitely not normal. I think because I have to deal with so many things, I think inside you have this kind of, is it a defence mechanism, which isn't also good, like a wall you put shut, up because it has to down. come. Yeah, but I just, I've learnt to deal with situations. It's on the go, on the go. And I think that's why I had that breakdown at that time. So everything then, I was like, fucking hell, it, it's now popped. It's like a champagne bottle ready to pop. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> but they say in your brain, don't you? They they trained me to deal with it in my brain to move it to a different part of my brain. Whether that works or not, I've tried CBT. I've, I've tried so many different things. And I just think, I can't meditate. I've tried. My brain is just, I haven't found the right one. Do you meditate? Not at the moment. Have, have, you, have you ever done it? Yeah. Does it work? 
It calms me down, relaxes me. But and can you concentrate on it? I have th- thoughts that pop in my mind, but you, but that's what happens to me. I start. I off, think everybody does. It's, do they? It's about letting them pass through like a car on the motorway. But I, I, that's the trouble with me. Like there's too many fucking cars. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, yeah. I'm like, this is happening. Have you thought then about doing more... a silent meditation retreat in India? I've heard one. of that. What's uh, that then? You go to these ashrams and you literally sit on the floor and you 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 meditate for eight hours a day, and then they you just feed you and How go do you sleep do on the that, floor though? but then it's torture people are like break down in there and all that but you must have that can't be good for you especially well, no, it's someone because apparently with that amount of silence your brain can actually completely re- rewire really? itself so yeah. it, have, you, have you spoke to people who have done it and come out yeah then it's, and it's it works profound yeah it's apparently like because it's 10 days <clears throat> it's called a vipassana and have they they, they uh, originate from India? That's like the best right. place to go. I'd, I I had a, my visa ready and I booked one, and then I had a, a seizure in hospital and I couldn't go. But I was going to do. Why do you have a seizure? From How all the alcohol and drug this? abuse. Oh, this was years ago then. No, I still get them every now and again now. Do you really? Yeah. I had one when my son was born recently. I was in hospital. What do you mean? Just, but what did you know it was I coming? Just, no, if, if I don't sleep well, or if I'm really stressed, or if I'm withdrawing from drugs or alcohol, yeah, then I can have them. But do, do, are you non-alcoholic and drug now? Yeah, no, no. I had I'm a, looking I, him in the eye. Yeah, I've had a couple of relapses, and I've actually recently had a few drinks. Um, right, but. What's the I'll reason you don't drink? Is it you don't drink because it's that one drink that takes yeah, you I mean, over I, the edge? I was clean to and control. sober for five years and I was in complete sobriety. And, and then I tried to see if I could moderate it. Yeah. And I, I did for a couple of months and then I realised that it was slipping. Right. And then I stopped and then I, I left it another six months. And then I was actually at the premiere that I had a, a couple of drinks. And I'm always trying to test. I know this is probably the worst thing you can say to definitely people that are in addiction. But I think it's normal. You'll always. But I like, would love to get to a point at some point. I know that for addicts and alcoholics here, this are going to go, oh, my God, never say that because it's the worst thing to say. But I do want to get to the point where one day I can fully control it. I think that's it's pretty hard. normal to think that. Yeah, it's hard. And, I, and I've and i gone through the, the stages of accepting complete sobriety forever. But actually, I prefer to... Just say it's flirt yeah. with it a little bit every now and again and see if I can get away with it because I'd love to be able to have a couple of wines or something. Like situation. Sometimes you could be in a situation, I, I call it the drenny, the drenny poo, where you get excited. Oh, yeah. I hate that. <laughs> or you are like, drenny. do you know what I mean? Nervous or you get that excitement yeah, yeah, the and then you have to think, no, because that is the one, that's the tap on the shoulder for me. The tap on the shoulder. And like, it talks to me. It's really weird. It's like, that excitement, you'll have to like, no, Kate, don't. Because I know if I get that and I follow it, then I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to have a drink tonight. And it's always that I'm all right with drink. It's not drink. But drink could lead to the other. But it it don't really now. I, I, I know I can have a couple of drinks and I'm fine and I can leave it. If I'm in a ground and I know they're having a night out, I know me. I'm like, yeah, I'll get pissed. And then I never want to go home because I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to do it next. It's a binge mm. drinker. So I, I can have like a couple of glasses, but I'm not like nuts. I, I can handle it because alcohol's never been the problem for me. It was the coke to mm. self-medicate. But because I'm not in them problem situations now, I don't have to worry about it. And it's like, I don't care if anyone wants to do it around me. If they're going to do it, I'm just like, oh, that's the smell and that <laughs> makes me gag. But drink, I can have a couple of drinks and that. But I'm I'm a fun. I'm not an aggressive drunk. Never have been. I'm I, never, just, I haven't seen you drunk yet. No, I did. You have a drink at the premiere. I had two glasses of prosecco, mm-hmm. but um. Well, he's smiling like something you've done something naughty. No, I, no, something. I could have easily had a drink, but I just didn't want to get it in the ear. Right. Okay. You was on your best behaviour. Yeah, it's like when you go to events, like people have got to remember, this is another thing. When you go to events and you know there's paps or your red carpet, anyone would be nervous. And for me, it's like sometimes, of course, I get shy and I am nervous. If I don't know someone, I either overcompensate and talk so much, like that's why I look like I'm nuts, which I'm not. It's just me the way don't. I am. Or I need a drink just to like, because I'm nervous, I'd get anxious, anxiety. Mm. And I don't Even know, now to this day, like. I can events. get anxiety. Like, it's weird. If I do you think my... it'd just be another day in the office for you now? Like, oh, another premiere. I mean, how many premieres have you gone to? Come on. The premieres I'll get anxiety on. Right, is it because the Which paps? is weird. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I, I don't know. Because then I think, maybe it's the media because they write so much shit about me I mean, all you the know time. you were in the... 
papers for that premiere. But that was probably for my eye as well. Yeah, I, well, I didn't actually I ask you. I woke up last Friday Just random. getting Bunny ready for school and she's like, Mum, your eye's bleeding. I said, what do you mean my eye's bleeding? And went like that. I said, no, it's not. She went, no, inside. And I looked, I was like, what the fuck is that? So I went to the doctors thinking, oh, because I've got TikTok Live to do. What am I going to do? Because people are going to, if the media get a picture of it, because I know I had your premiere yeah, as well, yeah. and I thought, <clears> I can't, I can't not go because of my eyes. So I made sure I put out first, look at my eye, I've got a hemorrhage. So basically, it's a it's hemorrhage. Good, that was a good move because obviously people would have got a oh, picture this is and a thing, said, oh, and that's what they do, or... and that's what media do. And I thought, I'm not cancer. I, I had to cancel TikTok because I had to go to the doctors to think if it was something serious. Um, but that's what happens. But that's why when I came to the premiere, I was feeling a little bit achy, ill, and then the hemorrhage, and I thought, I can't, I'm not going to let you down anyway. And mm. I like going to premieres. Um, I just felt shit. Because you oh. know when you don't feel good, mm. it's like, I've still got it there, it's going now. That's it. But, um, yeah, so I, I get anxious at premieres, masterclasses. I don't get nervous. But the masterclasses, I go up and down the country and people do my makeup. Basically, it's people who are there and I just talk to them and I have to keep the crowd going. Mm. It's like a one-man show. When I did my podcast at the theatre, I wasn't anxious at that. I was more worried about the singing. And then I actually said to the crowd, oh, no, it's that time, it's that time. And they're like, what? What do you sing? And I went, I'd done a cover of um, an acoustic version of... Um, you don't have to take your clothes no. off. Do you know that to one? I love it. Yeah. Time. So I've done an acoustic version nice. of that. And then I've done that with Scarlett. She was on X Factor. She's doing American uh, X Factor now. You probably don't know who it is. I don't know. And then I've recorded songs myself, which they all knew. The, the people picked before I went what they wanted me to sing, and I did that. Nice. But and doing that live, I think because I love singing, I always get slammed for it. I get more nervous doing that because it's my passion. Well, it must be hard to, to want to do something, but no, you're going to get slammed. Oh, and for that's it. the thing. I think that's what makes me nervous because I want to do it properly. Yeah. But I can go up and talk on stage. What else do I get anxious about? Getting on the train, shopping, going shopping on my own. I get anxiety. I still do it. How how is it living with like the fame that you have? Is it is constant, or do people leave you alone a bit? Or no, don't um. People stare, and I think because my face is forever changing, sometimes they're like, they don't reckon, they don't, are, you, is that? are you Katie Price? <laughs> yeah. And even if I try and disguise my voice or anything, soon as I open, Do you say no sometimes? Me, yeah, it, yeah, on the train yeah. that. How dare you? Yeah, no, do you know, sometimes on the train, they're like, are you Katie Price? I'm like, no. No. And yeah, and I hate it because they're lying. It's just because like, I just sometimes just don't yeah. want to be bothered. Like if I'm in like food shopping, like, people look at me sometimes, why are you food shopping? Like, well, who else is going to fucking do my food shopping? <laughs> I think people think I have an entourage of You can't people. order it, you know. I don't, because sometimes <clears throat> they don't have what you want. I like to be authentic and go in the shop, and I end up with, like, four trolley loads of stuff every time, and I hate packing have you got it and your, unpacking Have you got your supermarket fans that know she'll be in here uh, at some point? No, but it's the camera phones. It really winds me just up. Just when they randomly record like, so, and, No, yeah, like, if you hear it click. And then I sometimes right. I go up to say, you can ask. You don't don't you wouldn't like if I did that to you. Mm. Or if I've seen someone take a picture and then they then they come up and take another picture, I'm like, well, you've already taken one. Yeah. Like sometimes the kids are like Princess Mum. I am nice and I do talk to people because if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here. But yeah. you don't have to be rude. Or if I'm in a restaurant eating mm. and I'm eating, they come and say, I'm really sorry to disturb you. I know it's rude, but can I have a picture? And I feel like saying, well, if you know it's rude, why <laughs> yeah, ask? Yeah. So I sometimes just say, can you just wait till after? And then hopefully you know, they don't bother. <laughs> they don't bother. It's not that I might. I don't care what I look like. <clears throat> but, but of course sometimes... you can't do it constantly. I mean, if you did it for everyone, you wouldn't have a life, would you? It's like when I want to compete on my horses. That's the worst. Like doing dressage and that. Because you have to concentrate. And it's all when I get in the ring, then everyone wants to watch. And then my horse will like flinch or whatever. And then it's, I just... You're famous in the horse niche as well, yeah. <sighs> My worst was I did it on live sports. I, I did it at Horse of the Year show, a dress I guess there is them. kind of like an attractive element to I that. I fucking yeah. love it. I've always been... Horses is my safe place, as they say. Okay. It's just I love it. And I had to do it on Sky Sports, and my horse had never seen it, and it is a big audience, and it's live, and the pressure... I was shitting myself, and I had to do it twice. But sometimes I think it's good to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. Because if you don't... Is that one of the things you do with your clients, get them to... Step out of their comfort zone? Clients. I'm so easy go. I am the most least deaverish person. Everyone who works with me, they always think, oh, I think you're going to be a diva. And they're like, Kate, you're the most easiest no, person. I mean, you're coaching clients. 
Oh, I... So wait, like in the future when you... <clears throat> maybe you'll do it on a course, maybe you'll do it whatever, but say, for example, you had your client, <clears throat> would you be encouraging them to step out their comfort zone and do all yeah, those scary things? Yeah, but I think things? I'm quite good at judging people. Like, I am the most patient person you would ever meet. Come in my house and you will see everyone around me, they're like, hey, I just don't know how you do this. I don't know where you get your patience from. I'm, I'm, I know I'm a bit like, we're a... But I am the most laid-back, patient person you will ever meet. Um, but I have got a big personality, but I'm very caring. Hence why I still want to train to be a paramedic. I have applied for the courses because I Paramedic, am boxer, life coach. I, well, I was training to be a nurse when I left school, a registered yeah, no, nurse. Remember, yeah. And it's like, and then I just got into this crazy world and 30 years next year, I'm still here. But I am the care of the family. And sometimes I think that's why I was meant to have Harvey because I, th I don't think a lot of people can deal with situations like that. Some people can, some people can't, and I do, and I love it. I, I am the carer, and I just want to help people. Love it. So I I'm going to need to train you to become so, so, a life yeah, coach. So what category, like 20 questions later, you were well, talking about it. I think we'll have to have an offline conversation. <laughs> I think that's going to be a difficult one but to get through. But do you think I'd be good life coach, mentor, or whatever? I think you need some training to, com to balance out but calm some me things. Down. <laughs> <laughs> and give you some tools, some professional ones. But if and I, I think, can do course, it, anyone could, yeah. can. Yeah. And like, so I just that, find is it that a commitment? You're going to become a life coach. I really want to with, do it. I'm okay. one million percent. I just think it's a no-brainer with me. Like I do say to people, if I could do it, come through all that stuff, you can. do I it. I think we could do a good, good documentary on that. Katie Price turns into life coach. I think that would be good. Documentaries are so, like I say, documentaries all this now, the way forward. It is. It's not magazine interviews. It, it is literally online. It really is. And now I've got a Netflix doc, got a foot in the door, say, look, you Netflix. Have, and I've got Netflix I, who want to do about my life. Well, there like, we go. As if, but no, I would do it. Like, I could do low. I could do it all. <laughs> but I could, definitely a documentary and training me to be a life coach. Yeah. You, I, you wouldn't be a difficult client, though, would you? You'd learn, you'd listen, no, you'd coachable. No, no, because it's something I'm interested in. That's the difference. Like, Misfits, the fighting, Channel 4 have already said they want to document it all through the training to the mm. fighting. Um because it's interesting, isn't it? How how you become being in the ring, boxing, and with the, in you know. But the life coach, I think, is more interesting because I think I can go in depth more. What's happened to me? You, how it works, what it does. I think it would be quite educational. So you've got to remember when you do these things. Why are you doing these programs? To me, I would want to things to be educational. The reasons behind it, why I've chose to do it, and how you get to do it. And if you can make a couple of quid in the process, it's a bonus as well, isn't it? A couple of quid? Fucking hell, I'm going to go Louis Vuitton now and buy some more handbags and that. <laughs> Perfume. <laughs> Actually, no, horses. The horses and cars I like. That's yeah. it. I'm not high, mate. I don't care. Trainers, horses and cars are my thing. That is it. Always has been. It used to be diamonds are about girls' best friend. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll get a diamond again. <laughs> maybe I'll get a diamond. <laughs> That I don't have to buy myself. Oh, oh. you've had many a diamonds bought. Yeah, I, no, you're joking. Cole's the only one who bought me a diamond. All the others, I had to buy myself. And say, look at my even my own wedding rings, and that I've bought myself. So you think you? Is another engagement on the cards? I think I read. Or was well, that a we, bit of pap? Or what was? What, oh, I don't know. Pictures in a, a shop the other day wearing a wedding dress, and people oh, said you're getting married. But that wasn't. That's because I wanted to dress for my podcast show because my sister oh, dress yeah. is quite different to me. I'm me, and I wanted to come on stage in the big fucking dress. Why not? And the tiara and all I, this. I can see how this press will drums the conclusion of if you're dressing up in a wedding dress. There's going to be a. What is, it, is it the fifth wedding? Was it? I don't know. You um, must know. <laughs> Because Fourth? I've done vows, because I've been cheated on so many fucking times as well. I don't know with Kieran how many times because he cheated on me. So then we did our vows, this, that. Pete, we got married. Then I think we did our vows in South Africa. Alex, I got married in Vegas. And then got married in my garden in a marquee. But I just look at them as rehearsals. They're not the, the real things. Really? So you're still waiting I think for the real a real thing. wedding for me would be something I did in private, mm -hmm. not for a magazine spread, because mm -hmm. I don't think they would pay the money these days anyway, but something <laughs> where it's not on show, like something real for once, mm -hmm. not that not everything has to be documented. Mm -hmm. And I think I've learned that as well, because my whole life 
has been documented. Mm. Magazines, TV, this, that. Sometimes it'd be nice. And knowing someone wants to be me for me, mm. not what they can get out for me. So all mm. my exes I call Mr. Prices because they've all made something out of themselves. Right. And that's not bitter, Mr. it's Prices. a fact. Let's go to check in time. Well. <laughs> Do we need a number three? We all, yeah, we do. <laughs> and now I'm in London. There's no excuse for it. We can just keep these rolling. So uh, how do we uh, wrap? Oh yeah, why do you live in London now and not Bali? Uh, for the birth of the baby boy. Just thought oh, it'd really? be better to do it in England rather than Bali. Where did you, where did you have him? Portland. St George's, I think it was. No, not St George's. Um, oh, the Royal. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> what are we like? Was it natural cesarean? A natural. Yeah. So you've seen it. It was a quick one as well. Yeah, it was in oh, really? Th th from water uh, bursting, uh, the, the water's oh, did breaking, they? to baby is three hours. Your Joe, that's quick. Mm. It would literally we went to the hospital and you're like, oh, ready to go. Fucking hell. So I've done one natural and the others have been out my sunroof. <laughs> sunroof. How long was the natural one? How long did he it take? He was nearly three weeks late and they had to induce me, two oh pressures. Then they had to break my waters. It's the worst pain ever. No epidural, oh. gas and air, fucking hurt. I was scared stiff, and the others have been the sun. Much so as soon as you had that, you was like, no more. No more naturals for me. Well, no. I couldn't anymore anyway. If no. I want another one, it's sunroof. Booked in, and you look good. <laughs> All right, we're getting kicked out. So bye, bye. we're going to have to do a round three. <laughs> round three, and we'll do an update. And also, hold on a minute. Why haven't I been invited on your podcast? Would, 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 would you do it? I don't know if you're too big to come on mine. Oh, you're stupid. I'm of course serious. you Don't be. Look, we got Lewis here of his Netflix programme. <laughs> He's been doing his podcast. Would you come? We would have yeah. you on mine. Talk yeah, about mental to, yeah. health and that. Of course. And all this and big up. Why yeah. don't you do that then? Well, yeah, and ask me. Well, I sometimes I want to ask people and I think they wouldn't because they, they're too big themselves to no, do it. No, be stupid. As long as you... Well, because I was thinking, what oh, can I what get in return? Oh, what could I ask hmm. Lewis? Oh, I let's say you're on, you'd be on my podcast. Yeah. The questions are, I would announce to people you're coming on and see what questions they'd want me to ask. All what right. could I ask Lewis? Mm. <laughs> oh, you let me actually talk as well? <laughs> Don't, this is what my sister does. She Now she interrupts me and goes, Kate, Shut let the fuck me up. talk. <laughs> well, it's better than having well, I, someone I who answers of, just yes and no questions. A couple of comments on the YouTube video of, uh, of our last podcast, people said they didn't like me because they thought I was rude because I was just trying to... Trying to get some no, work. I don't think you're rude. No, but I, I do don't. talk a lot. I, I should be and, a politician But I was, I think I was, I was going, all right, okay, well, let's try. And, and I was trying to see the conversation too much. I think but that's because you didn't right, know me, but I do talk a lot. Would you rather have a guest that Go talks on. a lot or just answers, well, yeah, no, I think that's more hard work. I isn't think it? maybe we should work on a bit of balance. I need, I need balance and <laughs> fucking everything. I'm right. not a discombobulated before, character. Before we get kicked out of it, because we will, tell everybody here why they should watch a psychopath life coach quickly. You have got to uh, watch the, the Psychopath Program, the no. documentary. <laughs> Psychopath Life Coach. Right. You've Psych got to watch the Psychopath Life Coach. One, because I'm into all of that. It's fascinating to know how someone could be such rock bottom, like discombobulated life and turn it around and be a life coach and now mentor people to get them back on track mentally and in their life. Like, I've had the journey and I even watched it and I it was compelling and I just could not stop watching it. I just wanted to see more and more and more. So he needs to do a, a number two. Like, not like, <laughs> but, yeah, you've got to watch it. It's actually really interesting. And the answer to you at the end, do you think he's a psychopath or not? Well, you didn't even answer that. Thank you so much for doing that. But I you didn't did. Answer, you kind of gave me a roundabout way. I, I, I just think said, if you are a psychopath, you are, but who cares? But do you think I am? And I said, has anyone pushed your buttons? Yeah, but do you think I am? You probably are. Okay, but you know you. how to control no, it. Thanks. I, just but I love that. that. <laughs> <laughs> do, or do you think I can let you it are? out as well. But you wouldn't know if you are because that's your... You can you, ask me that on your podcast. But you wouldn't know if you are anyway because that's you. How just would me, you yeah. know if you are? Like people say, am I nuts? I think I'm different. But no, I you don't explain nuts. how. You are nuts, you nuts and I'm a psycho. <laughs> psycho nuts between us. Yeah. Right, thank you very Thanks, much, Katie guys. Price. We're going to have him on my podcast. Yes. And make sure you like and subscribe. Have you got bonus episodes? No. You need to do that. Right, well, you do people teach me subscribe all this stuff? to you now? Subscribe to the Yeah, do, can, do they pay to subscribe to listen? Do no, they no, pay this, to listen? no, it's a free one. Well, you've got to do your bonus now because that's what we've started doing as well, where they get to know more details that... You can't really discuss. Juicy yeah. Right. Okay. And then so that links into my OnlyFans. Because that's what I do. 
Right. It's good. I'm going to get mentored by you. I'll help you become a life coach. You can mentor me no, in you business. you need to and do that. Oh, I will. You've got a good platform for it. All right, I will. You say you want to make the quids. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right, let's go. Right, thank you very much, Katie thank Price. Thank you. Bye.